All right, just about set to go. Today's starting pitcher, Tyler Phillips. But Chris, he hasn't exactly been stellar here on his home mound. Well, I'll say this. Every player wants to perform well at their home ballpark, in front of their fans, in front of the city. And you know this guy no different. He wants to be more effective here. So, you know, you look at the numbers. They haven't been great at home. I'm sure he wants to turn that around, and we'll see if he's able to start that in this one. And the pitch. Bows it back with two strikes. And today is draft day, singing an exciting day in terms of the future of the sport and the future of these teams. It's also changed a lot in terms of the immediacy of finding out. I mean, what was it? Carrier pigeon was how you found out about. Let's take a look at our lineup. And so far this year, this has not been a very good offense. Well, in this day and age, if you can't slug and get on base, that OPS has to be at a certain level. If you're going to produce runs, give your pitchers an opportunity as they're facing tough offenses as well. Zach Gellaw now at the plate. Next Ball pitch three. is downstairs. Three balls, one strike. That clips the corner. I got three and two. Hard hit, right side. Stott over to first in time. Two up, two down. Batting third. The center fielder, number 33. JJ. Two outs, base is empty. And here is JJ Blade. Swings through that one for strike two. Good late sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good. And then by the time he gets in the hitting zone. Swing and a miss. And he got him. And it's a three up, three down inning. Nothing doing there for the A's. Phillies coming up to hit. No score. Major League Baseball is on the show. Back here with my pal Siggy, getting the nod in this one, number 40. Well, it hasn't been a great year so far in terms of ERA, but he's had some decent games, and there have been some flashes of greatness, if you will. We'll see today if he's able to get ahead of hitters and perhaps get some swings and misses, put himself in a position to bring that ERA down, because you know in the back of his mind, beyond the W, he wants to have a better earned run average. Bottom of the first. Kyle Schwarber comes up to hit here. And the count one and two. Throughout history, the fastball down has been the most successful pitch. Guys can handle a little bit better these days, but they, of course, still oh, prefer something time. built high. 2-2 two -two now. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. And a pitch. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Next pitch is outside. In the air, right center. This is mashed way back and gone. Gigantic blast. Home run number 20 on the year, and it gives him the lead in the first. It's 1-0. He kept swinging, and it paid off. Well, that was a battle, Boog, and he just kept taking his cuts. Finally squared one up. Singy, this was a mammoth home run over 460 feet, according to stat pads. You know, Boo, there are only maybe 20 or so guys in the game that can hit a baseball that far, and it's absolutely crazy it's even that many. Such an impressive swing of the bat right there. Trey Turner now. That one missing inside. 
Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up and you start to expect a big inning. And another ball. The real threats are coming up. Already given up a home run in this inning. It's going to really have to bear down. And a base hit. Just kind of sliced that one into center. And now here is Harper. And here it comes. To first, might be two. Off balance feed, there's one. Back to first, and that is a double play. The 3 6 1 double play, in my opinion, is one of the toughest plays to make. You've got a pitcher covering first, and the middle infielder throwing to a moving target. Everything has to be perfect, and right there, they made it look pretty easy. And now it's Alec Bohm. The wind and the pitch. Two outs, base is empty. And a ground ball to first. And it goes just foul. The wind of the pitch. That one to first. Brown. Throws to first in time. That's out number three. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. It's now 1-0. Back here in Philadelphia, second inning, set to go. And now the DH, Brent Rooker. Kicks and fires. Good eye in that spot. It's a good take. Pitch misses. Counts full three and two. Boog, our man Daryl Parker, DP, at home plate for this one. Pretty average size strike zone, but the book on him is that it sort of moves around. You can't always count on how he's going to call it from game to game. And it's through for a hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. And now here's the A's catcher, Shea Langoliers. The 1-1. Fly ball to right. Castellanos on his horse. Squeezes it. So here's Brown at the plate. Kicks and deals. On the ground left side. Six. Four. He's out. Three. It's a double play. And that'll do it for the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. We go to the bottom of inning number two. It's the Phillies one and the A's nothing. at Citizens Bank Park. Bottom what half of inning Philly. number two. And now for the Phillies, Bryson Stock. Backs and misses. It's a strikeout. Oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Struck him out looking. 
Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Two outs, space is empty. Brandon Marsh steps to the plate. Late on that fastball. One ball, two strikes. That nope. one close, the ruled a ball. The count now two and two. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. That misses the zone. Three and two now. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Throw on to Brown. And the Phillies are set down in order. Down quickly go the Phillies. They lead it 1 0. Top half of the third inning. Striding to the plate now for Oakland, number 28. And a pitch. Swing and this one's bounced to the ground. Stott over to first in time. Lead off hitter gone in the third. The first baseman, Brett Harris. Brett Harris up next for the A's. It's a strikeout. And the batter will be the shortstop. The 1-1. One, one. On the ground to the left. Turner with the throw to first. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. A's go quickly and quietly there. They still trail 1-0. Here, Citizens Bank Park, as we go to the last of the third. Here's the center fielder, Johan Rojas. Swing and a miss. It's a ball and two strikes. The pitch. And he hits a ground ball right side. Steps on first for the out. That is done. The catcher. Garrett And here is Garrett Stubbs. One down, base is empty. Nope, that's off the plate. Ball two. And ball another three. ball. Three balls, one strike. In the air, left field. On his way over. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's two down. Now batting. The designated hitter, Kyle Schwarber. So digging in now for Philadelphia, Kyle Schwarber. On the ground, that and foul. that's just foul. Here comes a pitch. Swings and misses, struck him out. Phillies down in order. 
but they hold a one nothing lead. New inning getting started, and now it's going to be Lawrence Butler. That's outside, and a count two and one. You know, these A's just lacking discipline at the plate in this ballgame. So many of their outs have come from weak contact on pitches. They're chasing outside of the strike zone. You can't do much of anything with those locations, and that's been true again today. And the next pitch is way outside. And as a pitcher, when the hitters are swinging at everything, you feel no need to challenge inside the zone. You just keep working the corners and expanding that strike zone and beyond, and they just keep eating right out of your hand. Bounce to the left side, and it stays fair. Makes the turn and heads for second. The throw in, safe at second with nobody out, and he represents the tying run. Just a simple ground ball the other way that had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in play, and just hope it finds a hole. Zach Gellar up next for the A's. The pitch. And another ball. Ground ball right side. And he handles it himself for the out. That's a good piece of hitting right there. It's early, but you still want to move the runner up and give your team a chance to score. That's exactly what happened. So you better believe your teammates are happy with you after that at bat. The pitch. Lifted in the air right center field. Rojas sizing this one up. He's got it. Runner tagging and heading for home. He'll score on the sack fly. It's 1-1. One, one. Well, we got ourselves a new ball game. Nice job right there at the plate. Sacrifice fly, and he gets in the tying run. Now it's the DH, Brent Rooker. The wind of the pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Fights it off, you'll see another. Three. And down on strikes he goes. Third out, and that ends the frame. One run on one base hit, no errors, and nobody left on. On now to the bottom of the fourth. All tied, 1-1. One, one. Four. Here's Turner now. When he steps into the batter's box, the comfort level looks so high. It doesn't matter what kind of delivery that pitcher has, what kind of velocity, what kind of secondary stuff. He is so settled in there. He owns the home plate area. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Just a mid-90s challenge fastball right there. Not much to it. And I'm sure he'd love another swing at it because... It was in a very hittable location. Those are the swings where you can sometimes start to question yourself as a hitter and say, how did I miss that? But you know what happens. One out, base is empty. Next one misses, and that's ball two. Nowadays, with advanced metrics and increased use of moving the infielders around, defense isn't necessarily about making errors. Are you able to get to the ball? Are you able to position fielders where guys hit the ball, but within the new shift rules? And an area that goes unnoticed is the coach that's responsible for positioning and then uh, the research person that's providing the information. So what we're seeing in baseball, so many more people behind the scenes that are contributing to the success between the lines. Drill to right, way back there, and that is gone. 22nd homer of the year and the grab the lead. It's 2-1. He absolutely feasts on right-handed pitching and devours that one for a homer.
And you can see that's what he expects of himself at bat after at bat. He's that confident. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit. Spit on some other pitches in this at bat. Was very patient and it paid off. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Alec Bohm. Down the line, on the move. Snags it on the run. Out number two. It's a good recovery, though, after giving up the home run. Not allowing it to stay in the head, but going to work at the next hitter, and a tough one at that. Two outs, base is empty. Bryson Stock stands in for the Phillies. Two down, nobody on. Eight, two. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Bryce Harper brings the power for Philly. And it's now a 2-1 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. We go to the top of the fifth, digging in for Oakland, Shea Langoliers. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. Swing and a miss as he was out front. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. Just misses with that one. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely. And I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprised a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. Seth Brown up next for the A's. One down, base is empty. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. To the right side, stop. Gathers and throws to first. And the first two set down in the top of the fifth. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Now it's the right fielder. Well, on the mound, very efficient, able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about yeah. every at bat. They say you win. One ball, two strikes. Two down, nobody on. And we're at the top of the fifth. That's down and in. Out to short. Trey Turner gloves it. Oakland goes quietly. And one, two, three go the A's. They're down two to one. And welcome back to the ballpark. Nick Castellanos at the plate now. Here's a one, two. That one just misses. Oakland's bullpen has some movement. Kyle Muller getting loose out there. Estes getting cranked up as well. The pitch. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. It's almost like he's telling the guys in the bullpen, stand down. I got this. Left fielder, Brendan Marsh. Now, Brandon March. Here's a 1 1. He swings and fouls one off. Righty to the plate. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. 
Picks up strikeout number seven. Typically that high fastball, if yeah, it's man. close to the top of the strike zone, a hitter, if he's prepared for it, can get to it. But that one just had that little jump at the end, which indicates there's a good spin rate on it, and it didn't decrease in velocity as that hitter's internal clock would expect. This ball well hit, left center field, and that splits the gap. And he's in at second with a two-out double. Well, patience and discipline paid off right there as he got into an advantage count. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. So two down. Garrett Stubbs will hit next. The pitch. Liner, base hit. Rojas headed for the plate. He'll score. It's 3-1. Picks himself up an RBI. That was a thing of beauty. He may have been a little behind the pitch, but by getting that barrel into the hitting zone early on in the swing, he was able to meet it and still shoot a line drive down the line and left. So digging in, Kyle Schwarber. And Open. another ball. That Ball one three. misses. Three and one. He hasn't fallen behind in the count like this all day. He's in danger of walking his first batter right here. That's in there. And it's three and two. Three, two, two out. Runner on first. A lot of movement in the end. A swing and a miss. That retires the side. And that'll do it. But they pick up one run on the RBI single. It's now a 3-1 ball game. You're dialed into the show. Back here in Philadelphia, now the third baseman, Brett Harris. Swings through that one out in front that time. Stirring in the Phillies bullpen, Jeff Hoffman appears to be getting loose. Strong, a left-hander, also throwing. Not close with that one. Three and two down. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. Here's the shortstop at the play. And the pitch. Up the middle. Stop. Throws to first. Two quick outs to open the top of the sixth. The batter. The left fielder. Lawrence Butler. Lawrence Butler getting ready to hit. That's in there. Two balls, two strikes. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Zach Gellar to bat next. The Athletics trailing by two, and we're in the top half of the sixth. Got it by him for the K. Three up, three down that time. Two, three, four, due up in the home half of the sixth. It's the Phillies three and the A's one. Joey Estes into the game. Well, he's been hit pretty hard at times this season, as you see with the big ERA. So this is an important outing for him to get on the right track. Here's Trey Turner. For the Phillies. The I never shortstop. got to play at Citizens Bank Park in my career. Just the old veteran stadium in Philadelphia, but the crowds here are just as energetic now as they were at that old park. And trust me, as an outfielder visiting town, you're going to hear it from the fans out there in the bleachers. Got him.
him swinging. Oh, nothing too fancy on the strikeout pitch right there. Just a low 90s no fastball, and I'm not sure he was trying to challenge him, but that's pretty much what happened. Very hittable location, but he found a way to just get it by him. Here's Bryce Harper. He's hitting well here at Citizens Bank Park, which is more of a hitter's park. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. The Athletics have some bullpen Two action. Strikes. Kyle Muller, the young lefty, looks to be getting himself ready. And the righty deals. Hard on the ground to first. He'll do it himself. It. Two up, two down. Hey, man, four pitches, two outs. That How is an it? excellent base. And digging in for Philadelphia, Alec Bohm. Two down, nobody on. Here in the bottom of the sixth. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Righty delivers. Caught him looking for the K. Three up, three down for Philadelphia. But they still lead it 3-1. Welcome back. back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Jeff Hoffman. He's done the ball very well overall this season. He's been really tough to get to. You see that ERA, and that's where you love to be. Now it's the second baseman, Zach Geloff. The second baseman, Zach Geloff. Here's a 1 1. And a foul ball. And another ball. That's the third. Boom. Goes on to first. One up, one down. J.J. Blade. This is J.J. Blade. Up the middle, into the outfield, base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Couldn't get any air under it, but he smoked that ball back up the middle. Timing was just perfect. Got great wood on it, and there's just no chance for the infielders with how hard he hit it. One gone runner at first. Brent Rooker up next for the A's. Tying run at the plate. And that's outside. Two and one. The tying run at the plate. Hit hard. That gets through. Lead runner touches second, headed for third. Save! Save. You beat it up. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. Timing on the swing was good. Able to shoot the ball up the middle. Didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked, but that's a good approach paying off. Two on, one out. And now Shea Langoliers. Right hander kicks deals. Swing and a miss. And the count. One and two. In the infield at the corners. Don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. Two on, one out. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Right-handed reliever. Damn! Huge strikeout there. That's about as nasty of a splitter as you'll come across, especially in terms of movement. I mean, that thing tumbles out of his hand and just drops off the table at the last moment. He keeps it down. It's just so tough to put wood on. 
New now, pitcher on now, Michael Mercado. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect the tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. And now the first baseman, Seth Brown. Two on, two outs. Hey. Top of the zone for a called strike. Left hand hitter waits. Little trouble with this one behind the plate. And now a single might score two. right center base hit one run is in the tying run is in to score and we are starting over back even it's 3-3 that's all he needed just a simple base hit and he drives in two in a huge spot a lot of hitters tell themselves line drive over the infielder's head that's what I'm trying to do just keep that approach simple and right there it was perfectly executed on time with everything and pulled it into the gap nicely to the batter now, number 28. Two, one. And another ball. Now a screamer into the outfield. Marsh grabs it on the run. Two runs, three hits, no errors, and one left. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. All tied up at three apiece. We're now back in a new four. pitcher here to start the bottom of the number seventh. 39. Kyle Muller. Kyle. The southpaw's been really good against left-handed hitters. This is Bryson Stock. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times a ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. Not even close there, and it's a full count. There's ball four. That's ball four. That could be a tone setter for the inning. Four straight pitches and the leadoff batters on base. We'll see if the next guy waits until there's a called strike before he takes the bat off the shoulder. Here's Nicholas Castellanos. At the belt and fires. And that one missing low. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. Comes up empty. That's strike two. This might be a steal situation, but that's not your average catcher behind the dish. You have to be careful here. And another ball. This is a really good feeling for a hitter. At this point in the ball game, you know that they don't want to walk you, so you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. 3-2. And that's ball four. Ball four. Well, interesting, he went with the off speed and walked the hitter. Man, you got to challenge the guy with the fastball. First and second, no outs. And now for the Phillies, Brandon Marsh. A little surprised we don't see a pinch hitter here with the lefty-lefty matchup. Eddie Diaz. Fought off foul.
And now the lefty. That nope. misses Outside. the zone. Two and two. Kicks and fires. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. And that is a big first out. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. But with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate. So very difficult to get the barrel on it. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave some. Flips it for one. What a double play that was. Inning over. Pitcher made the pitch, and his players made the play behind him. Nice job. 4 6 3. Inning ending double play. Top of the eighth. Now here is Brett Harris. The one two. That's the third. Boom. Zips it across. First out in the top of the eighth. If you want to be a great defense, you have to deliver consistently. It doesn't matter how many highlight reel plays you make if you can't execute the small stuff just like we saw. Now it's the shortstop. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Next offering upstairs. Boog, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. Lawrence Butler in the odd deck circle for the A's. That one down the line, and it's just foul. That was close. That one out to right. Brings it in. And there are two down. The left number four. Lawrence Butler up next for the A's. And a foul ball. Here's a one two. Got him swinging on the curveball. And good work there as he gets a one two three. Nothing doing there for the A's. Score remains tied at three. They turn things over to the southpaw, TJ McFarland. He's been so good against lefties. So digging in now for Philadelphia, Garrett Stubbs. Swing and a miss. And a count one and two. Swings and misses, struck him out. He's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field. He was out in front there. Just needs to let the ball travel a little more, and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. And next is the designated hitter, Kyle Schwarber. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss. And that is strike two. One ball, two strikes. Ripped on the ground a second, and that quickly two away. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. No nice job of the seven. pitcher to bear down, make Short the pitch, stop. get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. Trey Turner at the plate. Now this guy, a player that, if he gets on base, has the ability to really be aggressive getting around the base paths. Got the back going too soon at strike two. 
And a swing and a miss. And that's that. Phillies go down quietly in the inning. Still tied. Three and three. Citizens Bank Park. All set for the start of the inning. Here's the second baseman, Zach Gellar. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. This one in the air. Harper makes a nice running catch. Going to have to have a little more discipline in future at bats. That pitch looked good, but you can't hit it. It was just too high in the zone. You usually see a swing and miss or a weak contact in the infield. All tied up here at the top of the ninth. Missing inside, two and one. And that one clips the corner. Come a little frustrated with the strike zone. One down, base is empty. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. And downstairs. That's a really good take. Brent Rooker waits on deck. And a pitch. Backs and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, obviously, that was nowhere near the strike zone by the time it got to the plate. And people at home watching are thinking, what's he swinging at? But I'll tell you, some of the break guys snap off these days is just devastating. It can be so tough to recognize where a pitch like that's going to end up. Brent Rooker, the next to hit. The why to kick the pitch. On the ground to third. Boom. Goes on to first. And the inning is over. So they go quietly there. Hard of the order. 3-4-5 will get their shot in the bottom of the ninth. All tied up at three apiece. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And digging in for Philadelphia, Bryce Harper. This guy's got good power with one swing. He can win it for him. Oakland's bullpen has some movement. Ruben Heber up and throwing. Ersig, a hard-throwing right-hander, up as well. Here's a high chopper. And he grabs it in foul ground. And here it comes. That one misses. So a lead-off walk. His ability to draw walks has been something that's been part of his career since day one. Looks like we've got a substitution at first. Pinch running here. Edmundo Sosa. No outs. Runner at first. Alec Bohm stands in for the Phillies. Winning run on base at first. No outs. Good eye right there. I love this part of the game. Does he really want to try and steal second against this catcher? I know he's fast, but it's pretty risky. On the ground, left side. Six, four, out, three. And they turn the double play. Got what he was looking for on the mound right there, and his infielders took care of business. Pretty textbook execution between short and second to turn that into two outs. Bryson Stott stands in for the Phillies. Trying to send this extra innings. Slider misses outside. Two outs. Brown ball to the right side. He handles it himself. That's the third out. And we're headed to extras. game on defense Edmundo Sosa he takes over as the new first baseman 
Out of the bullpen for the Phillies, Matt Strom. And if you dig into his walk rate, his numbers are really impressive. He's really filled up the strike zone this season, so these batters better be ready to swing the bats. Go ahead, run on base. And now here's the A's catcher, Shea Langoliers. The one two battling here as he fouls it away. Well, if he's going to do something special right here, it's going to have to happen with two strikes. Man at second. He fouls it off. We'll do it again. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Next up for the A's, Seth Brown. Well, first base open. Really no reason to pitch to this hitter right here. Put him on. Have the force at second first, perhaps getting any ending double play. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. The one two. Slider misses outside. The only adjustment he needs to make is his target. If you aim at the outside corner, that slider's going to end up way off the plate. Perhaps look a little more down the middle, and you get it right where you want it. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Drops into the glove, and there's two away. Up next to the open, the right field. Now, and now the right fielder. The pitch. And now the count. One and two after the swing and the miss. Clearly was sitting on a fastball right there. It just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. Man on second, two down. Hit in the air, center field. Under it. Brings it in. And that's the third out. A lot of adrenaline, we can see it right there. And sometimes you just got to let it out. That's an outstanding job of taking that, executing, and getting out of a tough inning. Back here in extras, and a new pitcher on the mound in the bottom half of the inning, Lucas Ersey. Well, he's a big-time strikeout guy out there. This season, averaging more than one per inning. Runner in scoring position, no outs. Now it's the right fielder, Nick Castellanos. The right fielder. The pitch. And another ball. Home plate umpires trying to tighten things up a little bit. offering is in for a strike definitely not a pitch location you're expecting up there as a hitter when you know the guy's got a good sinker ball if he can get in that location boy you've got to look top to bottom and that's going to make it very difficult to hit throw on to brown one out in the bottom of the tent well such a confidence boost for a reliever to come into the ball game and get the first hitter he faces just makes everything slow down a little bit and then from there can really settle in And that's off the inside edge. And it's two and one. Swung on, belted. That one's back. Big year, ball game. A two-run blast. And the Phillies walk it off in extra innings.
When you get to extra innings, it seems like every guy is trying to come up with the big swing to hit the homer and end the ball game. Well, he did it. Huge swing of the bat, and we're all heading home. A 5-3 final score in this one. The Phillies hang on to win it. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon.